In this video, we are discussing a very important topic that is the features of MongoDB. So there are multiple different features for which this MongoDB has become so popular. So MongoDB has some different and unique features and they are like this. So that is the ad hoc queries. We are having this aggregation, schema-less database, grid FS, document oriented, sharding, indexing, high performance and replications. So here we are having the nine different properties which we will be discussing one after another. So let us start with this ad hoc queries. So at first we are starting with this ad hoc queries. So now ad hoc queries are those type of queries which are not known while the structuring the database. So sometimes it may come, the situation may come that whenever we are designing our database, we may not be knowing the future query types. So if those queries come, so those queries will be known as the ad hoc queries and those ad hoc queries can easily be handled by this MongoDB. So MongoDB supports this type of queries and these queries can also be updated in real time. The next point is our aggregation, very important point. So MongoDB has aggregation framework and you can batch process the data and get single result after doing some sequence of tasks on the group of data. So that means here the batch processing will take place and some sequence of stocks will be carried out on the data and afterwards uh, output will be produced. Just consider this one, we are having one input and then we are doing some match operations, we are doing some matching, we are doing some searching operations and then we are doing some grouping operations depending upon the value of some attribute, we are doing some grouping, then we are doing the shorting and then the output will be obtained. So this is a batch operations where we are having multiple tasks going to get executed sequentially one after another and that is known as the aggregation framework. Next one we are having this schema less database. So in this case the different document can have different fields and the size, content, type may vary from one field to another field in different documents. So there is a flexibility in dealing with the data. In case of RDBMS, we are having the schema which is totally static. That means all the records, all the tuples must have the same, same kind of data and the data type will be there. But in case of MongoDB, we are having the flexibility, different documents may have different data types and different number of data. So next one is the GridFS. So GridFS is a framework to store and access large set of data. So here to store our images, to store our videos, we require this respective GridFS and this GridFS is a framework to store and access large set of data and it divides the data into chunks and store them in the different documents. So this data will be divided into multiple different chunks and piece of data and they will be stored in the documents. You can find that we are having a huge file here and this GridFS will divide that file into multiple different portions also known as chunk of data and they will get saved in different documents. Next one is MongoDB is document oriented. We know that MongoDB is cross platform and document oriented. MongoDB is having collections and collections will have the documents and MongoDB is having high accessibility, availability and it is having high performance and so on. So there is a document oriented. So MongoDB is document oriented database and there are different documents to store different types of data. And each document has unique system generated key or ID. Next one is the sharding. So the, for the large set of data, we need the sharding mechanism and it helps to distribute large problematic data into some MongoDB instances. So here the data will be divided and it will be stored onto the multiple machines. So sharding is a type of database partitioning that separates very large databases into smaller, faster, more easily manageable parts and they, they are known as the data shards. So when the database size will get enlarged, then the database will be divided into multiple different shards and they will get stored onto the multiple different machines. So let us consider the following diagram. Here you can find we are having this application running, then we are having the driver, then the query router and the database has got divided into multiple different shards are there. So shard 1, 2, 3 and n 
and here we are having multiple nodes. So this node is known as the primary node and these are the secondary nodes. So the what about the data this primary node is having, so the data will get replicated onto the respective secondary nodes. So whenever the data is not available from the primary due to some reason then the data will be made available from the secondary nodes and that is why MongoDB is having high availability. Next one is the indexing, very important property. So indexing is one of the important option to improve the search query performances. We know that if you keep our databases in some indexed way, then obviously the searching of the, of the required value from the database will be faster in nature. So we should in index those fields which are matched with our searching criteria. Next one is the high performance. So MongoDB shows high availability and scalability. Whenever the workload will be used, then the, then the workload can get divided into multiple servers, that is a low cost servers. So as a result of that, the scalability can be increased. As a result of that, the workload will get divided, so the performance will be high in that case. So they are known as the commodity servers. So it has better query response for indexing and due to this replication. This replication will actually enhance the probability of the availability of the data. Now consider this one, say here we are having this one at the nodes and here we are having the key values. So how, the, how this particular hierarchical diagram is working, let me discuss that one. So if you find any key value, any key whose value is less than equal to 40, then I will be going to this particular node. Or if it is less than 40, then I will be going to this particular node. It is written that two values less than 40. But if it is greater than 40 and greater than equal to 40 and less than 75, then I, I shall be searching here. So here you can find that all the keys having the value less than 10 will be searched here. And greater than equal to 10 and less than 30 will be searched in this particular node. And with this particular key values, we are having the respective data. So we know that in case of MongoDB, the data is getting stored onto the documents in the form of key value pairs. So now we can find that how these keys are getting represented in this hierarchical structure so that we can easily get our data after doing the searching on the key value. So now we are going for this, there is a client is there, so read write is taking place on this, on this primary node and this primary node is doing the replication of the data onto the secondary nodes. Now the point is replication. So this feature creates the copy of the documents into the different machines. And we can have the primary node or its replicated nodes. So this is the primary node and this is known as the secondary node. The secondary node can also be called as a replicated node. So it is consisting of primary node and replicated nodes or secondary nodes. So when the primary node cannot work for some reason, then the replicated or the secondary nodes can take care of it. So it increases the availability and accessibility. So that is why this property is known as replication. So these are the features of MongoDB for which it is gaining more and more popularity in the market. Thanks for watching this video.